Hey guys, how's it going? It's Mr. Blake, and today uh, we're going to be talking about the pectoral girdle. I uh, This should be a pretty short lesson. The pectoral girdle is, while very important, is actually really simple compared to the other parts of the skeleton. So hopefully this doesn't give us too much trouble. Um, now when I say it's simple, uh, I, I mean simple in terms of there's just not a lot of bones, and the bones that are there are pretty easy to identify. In fact, the bones that were actually, you know, most of us already know about, there's nothing that's going to sneak up on you. Um, it's four bones all together, uh, and really it's just two bones, but you have two of them, right and the left, for each. Um, and then they're your clavicles and your scapulae. So the clavicles are sometimes called the collarbone, and they sit right here. I'm probably going to edit this out, but most of us can, can feel and, and know where those are at. Some of us probably even broken our clavicle. And then the scapula, uh, or scapulae, or scapulae, if you're going plural, I don't care which way you say it. Um, you're going to hear both ways from different people. Never sure which one's right or wrong. Um, but a scapula, singular, um, is a pretty, you know, pretty obvious discernible bone to pick out of the bunch. So I don't think it should give us too much trouble when we're doing our practicum. Um, combined, uh, it, it's going to comprise our entire pectoral girdle. So if you do get the question, how many bones do you have? Uh, in the pectoral girdle. It's a total of four, but really it's just those two bones. You just have them on each side. Um, the main goal, uh, the main goal, they don't look as if they have goals, but the, the main function of the uh, pectoral girdle is really to support the uh, arm, the upper arm. Uh, they're primarily just attachment points for muscles. I mean, that's really what they do. Um, there's a lot of curvature. There's a lot of uh, interesting landscaping going on, especially in the, the backside of the scapula. And most of the muscles that help move our arm, that help um, raise our arm above our head or rotate, um, elevate our, um, you know, our, our shoulders, they're going to find uh, either an insertion point or they attach there or they originate from there. So um, it's, a, it's a pretty complicated thing. Um, they're going to make up the one half, I guess, of our uh, shoulder joint. And the shoulder joint itself is, a, as most of you guys know, uh, especially if you play sports, if you've ever injured it, you understand very well that the shoulder joint is a pretty complicated, uh, complex joint with a lot of things going on. And these are two of the big ones. All right, so let's get into it. Let's look at a picture here. And this is what we see when we see the pectoral girdle. Obviously, what we have uh, in this photo is a lot more going on than just the uh, just the pectoral girdle itself. So I'll kind of highlight the areas. I think most of us are familiar with what they are. But the clavicle, I'm going to kind of trace this, and you guys know how awful I am at the art end. Uh, one of the things to identify early on when you, when you see this um, is that this area right here is a flat area. It, it's going to attach to the maneuvering. You can see the maneuvering, maneuvering the top portion of the sternum here. Um, it sits flush on this kind of sharp angle. So when you're going through and you're trying to identify right or left clavicle, which is which you definitely have to do, um, you're going to want to kind of try to identify that. Uh, the other thing you're going to look for is this little uh, tubercle down here, and I'll get into that at the end. And it's not labeled on this, but you can see where I kind of made the dip with my pen. There's a little tubercle there, and it faces down, and that's going to be huge when you're orienting. Remember I told you, whenever you're looking at bones, Pick out one or two things that can help you for sure identify that you're comfortable with. And it's, you know, it might be different for different people, um, but that you're comfortable with saying, okay, this is always facing this way, or this was always you know, facing laterally or medially. So for me, this is what I go. It's called the Conway tubercle, and I know that it faces inferior, okay, or faces down. I also know that the lateral edge of the clavicle always goes anteriorly. So the, cur the, the clavicle is sort of an S shape. Uh, it's hard to see in this particular image, but I think in a different image you can see it. It's a bit of an S shape, and it always is going to project anteriorly as it comes out and it meets the scapula um, towards the outside of our body. Okay? Uh, um, looking at the scapula, you're going to notice two pretty prominent processes. Um, the acromion process is going to be the... Um, superior process right here, and then inferiorly and medial, you have the coracoid process. Okay, so together they create a little space here, um, and 
these areas are crucial. If you've ever had a rotator cuff injury or you have uh, shoulders that are prone to, and I, I'm actually one of those people uh, where, you know, too much exercise um, and too much wear and tear, I can get some shoulder pain. And the reason why is because we call this the subacromial space. And you can see this little gap right here. Okay. Some people just genetically have a smaller space. The acromion process doesn't come up as high. And so all of the muscles and the tendons that go through here, when the shoulder joint rotates, you can see the humerus here, when it rotates through, it can actually um, pinch and impinge those tendons and cause quite a bit of inflammation and pain. So you want to be careful with that. Some people are just built that way. Uh, my whole family, I feel like, is kind of built that way. My sister and mom have both had uh, shoulder surgery. Both are volleyball players. So baseball players, volleyball players, people who uh, do overhead, you know, uh, movements uh, tend to be at a pretty good risk from this. By the way, I'm not sure if you can hear, uh, but I got one of my pugs up here. He's just going to town. Now he's staring at me. He's trying to find a reason to fall asleep, and I think he's got it. He came for the pectoral girl lecture. Um, so uh, let's look at the scapula. Let's get a, uh, let's get a different look here. Let's get a more zoomed in because the scapula's got a little bit more going on. So we can see it here. Uh, let's look on the top right. That's a posterior view. Okay. And so what's probably the first thing that's going to jump out at you that you know you're looking at the posterior side is this big old spine right there. Okay. Okay. And this is the, literally, we call it the spine of the scapula. This is a pretty straightforward name for you. Um, it is continuous with the acromion process. So if you see it, it actually, the spine actually follows up and over. Okay, and they are part of the same thing. Uh, the coracoid process, which please be careful with that, by the way, this coracoid process sounds a heck of a lot like uh, coronoid, which we've already seen, and you see it again. So you got to keep those straight. This is coracoid process right here. Uh, let me give you this other view here. So we're looking at the lateral view there. Um, and the one thing I want you to note is that when you're trying to identify, same thing, you've got to identify right or left, right, for most of these bones. Um, these two should be pretty easy because they're so distinctive in their look and because, you know, they have very different things on different sides. Um, and so what you always need to remember is that this um, glenoid cavity right here, let me see if I can highlight it there, the shallow little cavity that makes up the... Uh, the socket portion of our shoulder joint, which is a ball and socket joint. Uh, your humerus, the upper arm portion, is going to articulate right in with it, um, but it always has to face out because the, um, the um, humerus, the head of the humerus, is going to face medial and meet it in there. So whenever you're looking, so if I'm looking at the one on the top left here, for example, if I'm looking at that scapula, um, and I'm, I pick the scapula up and I'm like, okay, but right or left? Well, I know that the glenoid cavity okay, and the processes are on the lateral side. And if I know because the spine is back here, right, if I know that I'm looking at the posterior end and I know that this is the lateral edge, this must be the right scapula, okay? So the glenoid cavity and your processes are always on the lateral end, okay? And the way that you know which one's medial or lateral is you got to identify are you looking at the anterior or posterior. So if I were looking at this bottom image down here, it would be a lot more difficult because I don't have that uh, landmark, that spine, to sort of uh, get my bearings. So I would want to identify, okay, that's the back. That means this must be the lateral end here. Okay. So this is all the same. Uh, all three images are of your right scapula, you can see here. All right, so what do you specifically need to know? And you can consult your list. Um, I would just probably suggest, and I'm not sure what's on there right now, I'm not actually looking at it, but I think for sure um, the supraspinous and infraspinous fossa, and you'll see when we get to muscles, guys, these areas here are just like hotbeds for muscle attachment. All kind of, I mean, we have a supraspinatus, infraspinatus muscle. So understanding, and oh, oh my gosh, the acromion and coracoid processes, just muscles and tendons going everywhere. So... Uh, you know, like I said, this is kind of a nice one because it, it gets you a lot of mileage without having to work too hard. You're going to learn a lot of features that will come in handy, not only in this unit, but uh, as soon as we start learning uh, the location of some of these muscles. And um, it's pretty easy. You know, it's pretty easy to spot. So, yeah, uh, in terms of under knowing the names of the borders, I'm not really concerned. I really want spine, the fossas above and below, 
and the two processes, and then the glenoid cavity. So when you're going through this, um, on, and this should be on Wednesday, I think. Oh, great, now I just ruined this video. I'm not going to show it again unless it's on a Tuesday. Um, but if you are looking through um, those two, you're only going to take two, you know, two pictures. You're going to have a scapula and a, and I'll probably throw maybe more than one at you just so you can help, you know, start working on how do you know right or left, get your own little ways. But um, I think the main things would be to get pictures from different angles like this, and then that way that'll help you get some, that'll help you get these images or have some, have someone to hold them up too. I don't think they uh, work very well when you're kind of sitting on the ground like uh, or laying them on the lap table like you normally do. All right, so let's move on and get into just some of the key features. Um, for the scapula itself, it's a broad triangle shape. Again, it's very unique looking. Uh, I don't think you're going to confuse it with anything else. Um, two major fossas, super and infraspinous fossa, the acromion and coracoid process from the uh, AC. I think AC, A on top, C on the bottom. It's like it's so kind of like starting at the top, it goes in alphabetical order. The glenoid cavity, which is the socket for the um, for the shoulder joint, and then you have the three borders. But I'm not going to test you on the borders. All right. Uh, the clavicle is a narrow S-shaped bone. Uh, it's really easy to break. Uh, some of you have broken it, I'm sure. Um, articulates with the sternum on one side medially, and remember that's a kind of that flat area, and then the, the scapula on the acromial ends. All right. So it's going to, that acromion process is where the clavicle meets um, the scapula. Uh, again, structurally super weak, especially with that S shape. When you look at it, go and see uh, Brock, the skeleton, and look at it. And, you know, the right kind of hit football players tend to get these all the time. Actually, believe it or not, the people who I usually break clavicles are people riding bikes. They take a lot of headers, uh, mountain bikers especially, they go over the handlebars, and that clavicle goes down. Um, and it, you know, some people say it's like the most painful bone in the body to break. Other people, you know, I don't know. They're just like, oh, I didn't notice it at all. It's sort of bizarre. Um, again, if you're trying to figure out the left or the right, and this last little note here on the bottom, um, the conoid tubercle, which wasn't in that image, but you'll definitely see it. Find it's a little bump, and just understand that that faces down. That's on the bottom side. So you're going to see a bump on a relatively flat bone, and there's going to be this little dip you're going to want to um, make sure, in fact, you can see it in the picture. If you go back a couple slides, you can see it in the picture, um, but it's not labeled in the image that I have. Um, but I kind of like, you can see my uh, pen dip down a little bit. Um, and then the costal tuberosity, which is going to be where it meets uh, with the ribs. So they're going to be facing down. Oh, great. Typo. No judgments. Um, and then... I think, honestly, for me, the, the biggest one is that the, the last, the lateral side projects forward. So I put, the, I put the conoid tubercle down, and I know that the last segment, the lateral segment, projects anteriorly. And I think if you have that down, it, it's pretty easy to spot. Now, when I get back in, we'll definitely show it. Okay, so those are the two bones for the pectoral girdle. Um, it's sort of like a little reprieve in between the vertebrae and uh, going into our first um, part of the appendicular skeleton, which will be the upper limbs. So this is sort of going to link the two. Um, this is technically part of the appendicular, but it's sort of uh, it's sort of our connection point through uh, the vertebrae. All right, so uh, good luck. Uh, make sure when you go through, get lots of good photos. Uh, you should have a little bit of spare time. This thing's taking me about 14 minutes to explain. Probably didn't need 14 of explanation. Um, so head around the room, get your two photos, and then start working on the uh, worksheet that goes with it. Obviously the packet, if you look at the packet, it's got all of the photos, or it's got all of the uh, bones that you're supposed to get photos of, and then your lab um, required features page will tell you specifically which ones you need. Um, just don't jump ahead, you're just doing these two bones. So this should get done today. You got the um, Chromebooks in front of you, go get your photos, upload your photos, make your arrows, and then, you know, spend some time looking at right, left, make sure you can, you know, have a friend swap them around and then hand them to each other and say right or left, and then talk about how you guys are figuring that out. That's really helpful. All right. Otherwise, have a great day, and we'll see you next time.